Living in an age of revolution and unrest, Emperor Alexander I was Russia's most enigmatic ruler. A grandson of Catherine the Great, Alexander was educated in the atmosphere of the European Enlightenment and was raised to be a czar. But what kind of czar was Alexander I? Taking the throne in 1801 after the murder of his father, Emperor Paul, Alexander dreamed of reforms that would, if realized, provide his subjects with representation and rights. His architect was Mikhail Speransky, an advisor of modest origins whose projects were rejected by a Russian nobility that feared the loss of its privileges. With war on the horizon, the time for experiments had come to an end, and in 1812, Speransky was sent into exile. Like Speransky, Alexander was fascinated by Napoleon, initially seeing Bonaparte as the embodiment of the Enlightenment's liberal values. To his admirers, Bonaparte represented progress, modernity, and emancipation. But Napoleon's personal vanity, his arbitrariness, and his endless wars pointed to a goal of world domination. A meeting of Europe's two great emperors in 1807 produced the Treaty of Tilsit, which cemented Napoleon's control over Central Europe. In return, the alliance bought Alexander the time and security he needed to fortify Russia's position and expand its borders. Pushing south into the Caucasus region, Russia acquired the ancient kingdom of Georgia. It was at Sweden's expense that Russia annexed the Duchy of Finland, which was accorded autonomous status in what was still an autocratic empire. But the partnership with Napoleon, a decision that some of Alexander's subjects lamented, was not fated to last. The Tsar was especially concerned by his ally's sponsorship of a Polish state on Russia's western border. It was from the Duchy of Warsaw that Napoleon, who chafed at Alexander's insubordination, would launch his ill-fated invasion in June of 1812. With General Kutuzov in command of Russian forces, the army pursued a strategy of withdrawal, luring Napoleon's soldiers deep into the expanses of endless Russia. Reaching Moscow in September, the Grand Army found the ancient city deserted and in flames. His men growing desperate and hungry, Napoleon had no choice but to retreat. The Patriotic War of 1812 transformed Alexander, infusing him with energy and determination and boosting his popularity. Inspiring a national defense against a hated invader, the war against Napoleon was a genuine people's war that spawned the seeds of Russian nationalism. Having defeated Napoleon, a more conservative Alexander presided over the peace. An unprecedented gathering of Europe's leaders, the Congress of Vienna shaped international relations for a century and conferred enormous prestige upon a Russian emperor who then stood at the height of his power. But it was not long before Alexander's interest in worldly affairs gave way to isolation and mysticism. Even as serfdom disappeared in the Baltic provinces and Finland and Poland were granted autonomy, the Tsar's zeal for reform faded and so did his desire to rule. The record shows that Tsar Alexander I died of pneumonia, or malaria, in December of 1825. But later rumors concerning a Siberian holy man named Fyodor Kuzmich, who died several decades later, offer a compelling illustration of Alexander's enigmatic reputation. Had the Tsar faked his own death to become a hermit, and perhaps to atone for the way he had come to power? Such is the enduring mystery of Alexander I.